Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. Few months ago I covered the Ethernet in STM32, which includes UDP, TCP, and HTTP-based servers and clients. All the videos we covered so far were based on the RAW API. As promised in the last video, today we will start another series for the Ethernet videos, but this time we will cover them with RTOS. In order to use the LWIP with the RTOS, STM32 uses the Netcon API, which is basically to make the stack easier to use compared to the RAW API. You can think of the Netcon as a layer on top of the RAW API that we used so far. For this video, I am going to use the controller with our MII connection type, and no memory configuration. If you are using the MCU which allows you to configure the memories, you should watch my first video on Ethernet, or wait for the next video, as I will use the H745 controller in the next video. If you don't know what memory configuration means, or what am I even talking about, please go and watch the first two videos of the Ethernet series. The link to the playlist is in the description. Other than the Ethernet configuration, the things will remain same for all the controller types, and by this I mean the UDP, TCP, and HTTP part. Let's start the video, and create a new project with Cube IDE. I am using the STM32F750 discovery board. Give some name to the project, and click finish. Let me clear the pinouts first. We will start with the clock configuration. I have 25 MHz crystal on board, and I am running it as 200 MHz clock. All right now go to the Ethernet, and enable the type of connection you have. As I mentioned earlier, this board have our MII connection type. Let's start with the parameter configuration first. Since we are using the onboard connector, the PHY address must be zero. Also change the RX mode to the interrupt mode. When you do this, you can see the Ethernet interrupt is enabled. Finally do check the pinouts, and match it with the schematics of your board. Also make sure that the speed is set to maximum. Next go to the free RTOS. I am enabling the version 2 of the CMSYS. No changes are needed to be made in the free RTOS. Just leave everything to default. You can see there is a default task created, and later the LWIP will use this task, so leave this too. I am enabling the new library reentrant, as it gives the error while generating the code. Now go to the LWIP. Here first of all we will disable the DHCP, and manually enter the IP address, subnet mask etc. You can see here, the RTOS usage is enabled by default, as we have enabled it already. Anyway, leave everything else to default in the general settings. In the key options, the only change we need to make is, increase the heap memory size. I am setting it to 10 kilobytes. This is it for the LWIP configuration, leave everything else to default for now. Last but not least, since we are using the RTOS, we have to use the time base as anything other than SysTick. I am using the timer 6 for this purpose. Alright, if you are not using Cortex M7 based MCU, go ahead and generate the code. As I mentioned, I am using the F750 discovery board, 
and as ST recommends, we must enable the instruction and data cache for better processing. Also, this board has less flash memory, and it won't be able to store all the variables in the flash. That is why I am going to use the external flash memory, and for this purpose I must use the MPU. Set the MPU to background region privileged access only, plus MPU will be disabled during hard fault. Now enable the MPU region. The base address will be the address of the external flash, that is the QSPI, which is at 9 million hexa. The size will be 512 megabytes. And we will disable all the access in this region. As mentioned here in the memory description, the QSPI is in the block 4, which is 512 megabytes. This is why I blocked access to 512 megabytes of memory, so as to prevent the speculative access to this region. If you don't understand this part, watch the MPU configuration series in the Cortex M7 playlist. The link is in the description. The region 2 will start again at the 9 million hexa, and the size will be 16 megabytes. This is the actual size of the QSPI memory available on the board. Here we will permit the access, and we will set the region to cacheable, and bufferable. This was actually explained in my video about the memory configuration in Cortex M7 series MCU. We are trying to set this region as the normal memory region with the right back attribute. This is as according to the ST's recommendation for the QSPI memory configuration. We will create one more memory region at 9 million hexa, but this time we will enable the instruction execution from this region. This is it for the MPU configuration for the external flash. Click save to generate the code. You can see there is the default task getting created. And inside the default task, the LWIP gets initialized. Let's build the code once to check for errors. Alright we have four errors, let's solve them. The first one is about the multiple definitions of Erno. It is defined in the middleware, third party, LWIP, system, OS, sysarch file. Let's open this file first. This must be where the redefinition is causing error. Let's comment out this line, and rebuild the code. We still have some errors, but the error regarding redefinition is gone. Now the issue is related to the flash memory being overflowed. For this reason, we have already set up the MPU, so that we can use the external flash memory to store the data. Let's go to the flash script file to do the modification. We have to change the origin of the flash to the QSPI memory. The address is 9 million hexa, and the size is 16 megabytes. Save the file, and generate the code again and all the errors are gone now. We have modified the flash script but this is not enough. We still need to make some changes in the system file. Go to system init function, and we will add some code here. First we will reset the configuration register, and then we must relocate the vector table to the new flash base. This is all the setup needed for now. We will do the ping test first, and for that we don't need any functions. 
Let's build the code and debug it. Since I am using external flash, I need to use the external loader in the debugger. So here we will create a new debug configuration. Go to debugger tab, check external loader, and click scan. Now choose the MCU, F750 in my case. Click apply to save the configuration. Now click debug. Download verified successfully, let's reset the controller. Let's put a breakpoint in the error handler to make sure we don't hit it. Let's run the code. Let's ping to the board. The ping test is successful, and before we go ahead I want to show you the configuration for the Ethernet. This time I have connected the controller directly with the computer, without using any router. This is why I want to show the configuration for the Ethernet in the Windows. Here I have changed the IP assignment to manual. And you can see the rest of the configuration. I will upload these images along with the project, so you can access them later also. Alright the ping test was successful, and now we will go ahead with the UDP server. Here I have created the library files for the UDP server. Let's include them in the project folder. Here is the UDP server source file. Here is the netcon structure to handle the connection parameter, and the netbuff structure to handle the message related parameters. The address and port will store the same for the client. First of all the UDP server in it will be called. In this function, we will create a new task. The name is UDP thread and the entry function is here. The argument is null. The stack size will be default 1 kilobytes. The priority will be normal. Once the UDP thread is called, this function will be executed. Here we will create a new netcon connection. Netcon UDP will be used to create the UDP connection. If the connection is successfully created, we will bind it to any available IP address. And the port will be 7. This will be the port for the server. If we don't have any error, we will receive the data from this connection. This function will wait for some data to be received from the client. If the receive is successful, we will first get the address and port of the client. Then we will copy the payload into the message buffer. You can make use of this message, but here I am going to modify this message and store it in the S message. Next we will allocate the RAM for the PBuff. Actually while using Netcon, the netbuff is used to store all the information related to message. And the pbuff is just a part of this netbuff, along with other things like address and port. This TX buffer is the pointer to the pbuff structure we created in the beginning. pbuff take is used to copy the message into the pbuff. Next we will refer the pbuff in the netbuff, to our pbuff, so that we can send the netbuff to the client with updated message. Now connect to the address and port of the client, 
which we stored earlier. Then send the buffer to the respective connection. Finally we will clear everything. If there was any error during the binding, we will delete the connection. If you remember from the UDP server raw video, the steps we performed were pretty much the same. Creating a new UDP connection, binding to the port, and then receiving the data. And once the data is received, we modify the message, allocate the memory for the PBUF, copy the message into the PBUF, connect to the destination address and port, and send the buffer. That's enough explaining, now we will write the code. Include the UDP server header file. In the default task, after initializing the LWIP, we will initialize the UDP server. This is it, let's build the code, and debug it. I am going to use the Hercules as the UDP client. Run the code now. Enter the server address and port. Local port is the port of the client. Let's send hello world. There is a response from the server. This is exactly what we programmed in the UDP server. You can see the server is responding well to every message sent by the client. Things are working well, and you saw the UDP server responding. This is it for the UDP server using the LWIP and Netcom. We saw how to configure the RMII connection type, and also no memory configuration was required for the Ethernet. The next video will be about UDP client, and I am going to use the H745 MCU, which have the MII connection type, and also need the Ethernet memory configuration. You can leave comments in case of any doubt. The link to download the code is in the description below. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.